Hi everyone, welcome to MKT 561 uh, Services Marketing and today I'm going to look at Integrated Marketing Communications for Services. So there are two roles uh, in marketing communications. The first is to, un is to try and manage or explain the characteristics of the service to the marketplace. And this is particularly important with services given their intangibility and difficulty to experience before trials. So anything that can be done to reassure people about the possible service encounter is a really important part of marketing communication. Positioning the service brand and the key benefits that people will receive during the service, so managing their expectations, uh, is also another important part of this. So the characteristic of the service, Singapore Air, Air Plant, Air <laughs> Airlines over a number of years have, uh, I, think, I think since about the 1970s, have run a campaign centred around the Singapore girl, which is ease and um, ease of service and also personalised service and caring service. And this, of course, helps manage the characteristics of the brand. It provides a tangibility to an intangible brand and also a service, and also it helps, obviously, position the brand. Your text also has a nice example of the Wolgan Valley Resort and Spa where various aspects such as tranquility, luxury and the idea of escape are used to position the health resort brand. All marketing communication, communication activities should include the following elements, source, message, channels, receivers and feedback. You're probably familiar with this statement, but basically what this means is there should be an integrated and planned approach in communicating to the marketplace. And uh, this is covered quite well in MKT 510 uh, customer behaviour. But the, the important thing here is that the message must be credible uh, to the target market. Uh, the message must be able to be decoded and understood. The channels must be one which the market segment uses and uh, we, we should have knowledge about how receivers and feedback that we get from our message. So you can see here in this diagram that it's actually quite a complicated process. If there was a, a great process, if I knew this process 100%, I wouldn't be giving this lecture to you. I'd be off making my fortune. Okay, so um, really the, a lot of these aspects are covered in consumer behaviour and in integrated marketing communication, but nevertheless they are important in services. So there's a whole range of the communication mix that we can use here. And Qantas, of course, use, is, makes use of publicity uh, to make customers aware of its new aircraft. Why? Because that shows something about the brand, you're tangibilizing the service, and so on. We would tend to use different parts of the advertising communication mix for different outcomes. If our goal is to create awareness, we might focus on advertising and sponsorship marketing. If it's to get more people to try this Qantas aircraft and to fly off, we might use uh, sales promotions or, or, or um, personal selling to do that, particularly with business uh, market. Publishers we talked about, direct marketing is often used uh, in services, for example, coupons. Uh, online marketing communications becoming increasingly important because of the idea of credence. People will uh, share both positive and negative aspects of uh, service encounters online, which of course you've looked at earlier. So what are the steps then in what we call communicating to consumers or the IMC process? Well, it's really important you identify who you're, you're communicating to, how they get their information, then develop some objectives. Do you want to inform? Do you want to persuade? Uh, do you want them to get to trial the product and so on? Then you try and influence or influence their behaviour if you can. Hopefully the communication leads to a positive service encounter. And then of course there's the, pro the prospect these days that we build relationships with consumers because consumers build relationships with other people in social media. And also the important of repeat purchasing. So obviously the target market responses and who are that they will actually this offering will be attractive to them is why why research is very important here. The hierarchy of effects is, depends where this market is in the decision making. So we may want to move from awareness and knowledge to affect of liking preference through to getting people to purchase the the service in the end. 
And while this model's been around since 1961, it's still used today because it's a good business model. Okay, so uh, P&O Cruises, as you can see here, have thought about their market segment. Uh, they've thought about um, how they've designed their copy and their message here. This is P&O, a part of Carnival Cruises. And this is really for the young singles market here. And you can see what's uh, promoted here, food, wine, comedy, lifestyle, and um, good times, and so on. So this only works because P&O have followed this process here, which is identifying the target market, developing their objectives, and thinking about the communication channels. Increasingly, of course, this kind of approach would be better used using social media rather than more mainstream media that we might be familiar with. But people still do watch television. Outdoor advertising, uh, particularly in major cities where people are thinking about holidays, can be particularly important here as well. When would you look at outdoor advertising? Why are you waiting for trains while you're stuck in traffic in Sydney and Melbourne? Thinking about your holiday. The integrated marketing communication process follows these steps as well. So we'd have seen that really where I'm recapping what we're talking about here. The target market is crucial because they'll have different media uses and communication objectives are important in understanding the hierarchy of effects. The message strategies are really about the appeals or things that will value in those markets. So you saw quite a different um, appeal that there for tranquility and escape versus um, PNR cruises with the Walgan Valley Resort. And that's because they're different markets. And then you implement the media strategies. So this is quite well explained earlier on in your textbook here, which is a New Zealand tourism advertisement post uh, Christchurch earthquakes in 2010. And the communication effects here were really to try and encourage you to visit, so it's more of a behavioural. The influencing the target behaviour, well, to show that everything's open, that, uh, you know, that it's a really exciting place. You, you can see in the pictures here the kind of markets they're talking about. And finally, building the customer relationship. So this advertisement is talking about, um, thank you for the help and support. So Australia donated a lot of money to the Christchurch earthquake. But actually, if you really want to help us, come here and, and spend some money, be, be a tourist. So that's that call to action here. That's often a very important part of uh, communication. In this campaign here, which is the best job in the world, uh, this approach is taken a step further, whereby, um, again, this is at the other side, which is about building knowledge, awareness, and affect for a destination but also built a relationship in that people applied to go to, uh, to uh, this best job in the world, which we'll talk about, which you'll see in a little minute. And of course they had to block and communicate back to the market. Looking for work? Well, you may want to consider moving to Australia. Could this be your new office? Hamilton Island, off the coast of Queensland, needs a caretaker. Duties include feeding ocean fish, cleaning a pool, and collecting deliveries of mail. With a rent free three bedroom villa with plunge pool. All this and a salary of about $8,800 a month. As you might imagine, the regional director says response to the ad has been overwhelming. Apart from being a very clever way to publicise an extremely beautiful part of Australia, I think what this position reflects is a, a desire to say to the world, look, this is a wonderful place to come and travel to. And all you have to do is write a weekly blog. That can't be right. <laughs> There's no catch. This is a real job. I'd be very good at it. 
you'd have to remember to feed the fish. Video applications, including one from the bank account. All applicants have to do is submit a 60-second video to this website, islandreefjob.com. Hi, I'm John, and I'm a police officer in England, and you can tell by the silly hacks. I come from the ice tundra of the world. It's really cold here in Connecticut, and I'd love to go to your paradise. My dad was the great entertainer, Mr. Dean Martin. Oh, do you think all we do is eat sausages and sauerkraut? Well, let me prove you wrong, because I'm definitely not one of them. So we're going to allow the public to vote for their favourite candidate. We'll pick another ten, we'll fly them across to Hamilton Island for a final interview and then pick the successful candidate. It's very tempting. What do you sign up for that one, yeah, huh? Yeah, it sounds like tough work oh, there. Watch the whales. <laughs> so if you're not here tomorrow. <laughs> 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 I don't think so. <laughs> Australia. <laughs> right. Oh, man. So $80 million free publicity, and you, as you saw the stats there as well. So really, this advertisement was really about um, greater knowledge, getting things into the Avaic set, getting people to consider it, preference. Not necessarily at this stage trying to get them to visit Australia. That's further on down the hierarchy of effects. But uh, certainly trying to just build up awareness about a particular part of Australia and knowledge and conviction. That's it for now. Uh, see you textbook and online topics for more information. Thanks for listening.